This is AutoLine Daily, reporting on the global automotive industry. Daimler, which used to be the rock of Gibraltar from a financial standpoint, just had its credit rating cut. S&P Global Rating cut Daimler's credit rating to A-, which is still good. But S&P indicated it will probably cut that rating again in the next two years. The parent company of Mercedes-Benz is being hit by slow sales in China and Europe, and it has to invest heavily in electrification. Daimler already announced it will cut 10,000 jobs and warns that its earnings will be under pressure for at least a couple of years. You know, we've seen video cameras used in place of outside side view mirrors on concept cars for years, but now we're seeing them on production cars. Lexus is using them on the ES sedan, Audi on the e-tron, and Honda on its small city car, the Honda e. And Mercedes is also using the technology for its big trucks. Starting this past June, the camera mirrors, or mirror cam as Mercedes calls it, are now standard on the Actros truck. Two cameras are mounted on the left and right side of the roof frame, and images are displayed on two upright monitors mounted on the A-pillars inside of the cab. The images are divided into a main and wide view angle. And you could imagine, on a big truck, the system helps improve overtaking, maneuvering, driving in poor visibility or conditions, and cornering and braking situations. There will be hundreds of thousands of passenger drones flying above us in the next couple of decades. That's according to a new report from Frost and Sullivan. The first passenger drones, or air taxis, will begin operating in 2022 and will grow at a compound annual growth rate of 46% to reach 430,000 units in operation globally by 2040. The United Arab Emirates, New Zealand, and Singapore are expected to be the first adopters, while Brazil and Mexico aren't expected to be too far behind. We've seen a number of automakers invest in passenger drones over the last several years because they want to get a slice of what could be a very profitable market. Performance sells, especially these days, and automakers love it because performance models have higher prices and higher profit margins. That's why Hyundai is coming out with a performance version of the Sonata. It's called the Sonata N-Line, which is separate from the company's performance brand called N. While N cars like the Veloster N are full bore track cars, the N-Line cars are good for a few hot laps. The Sonata N-Line gets beefier springs, shocks, and bushings, as well as Continental 245 40R19 summer tires. The electric steering features a rack-mounted motor rather than a column-mounted one, and the seats are more heavily bolstered. It gets a turbocharged 2.5-liter engine that puts out 290 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque and is mated to an 8-speed wet-clutch DCT. Ford is offering a complimentary track experience for owners of the new Mustang Shelby GT500. Called the GT500 Track Attack, you'll get professional driving instruction at the new Ford Performance Racing School at the Charlotte Motor Speedway in North Carolina. In addition to learning in the classroom, you'll also be taught cornering, braking, and launch techniques from instructors out on the course. Ford is covering the cost of the driving school but owners will still have to pay for their travel and hotel. Ford will announce plans and schedules for the GT500 track attack in the near future. Mini is gearing up for the launch of its first EV and has released pricing and range estimates. The Cooper SE is estimated to have an EPA range of 110 miles. While that's well behind other EVs, it's not too surprising given the Cooper SE's 32.6 32.6 kilowatt hour battery pack. If you remember, the 2017 Nissan Leaf with a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack is rated at 107 miles. Pricing starts at $30,750, which does not include the federal tax rebate of up to $7,500. That puts the Mini in the same price range of EVs like the Nissan Leaf and Hyundai Ioniq Electric. 
And in other EV news, Cadillac's president, Steve Carlisle, says most, if not all of the brand's models will be electrified by 2030. That includes a large all-electric SUV similar to the Escalade that will start production in 2023 at GM's Detroit Hamtramck plant, confirming our earlier reports. We're not expecting every model to go electric only by that time. Carlisle says Cadillac could still sell vehicles with internal combustion engines alongside EVs, depending on consumer demand. Following along with the EVs will be a welcome change by many. Real names. Cadillac is going to start phasing out its alphanumeric naming structure. Here's hoping for a new Eldorado. And speaking of name changes, the Korean car blog reports that Kia will drop the Optima name in the U.S. and other overseas markets and rename it the K5, which is what it's called in Korea. Kia revealed the all-new version last month, and it's on sale right now in South Korea. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Skoda has come up with another smart, simple solution that its customers will find very helpful. You may remember this washer fluid reservoir cap that also acts as a funnel. And now it's offering a snow scraper that fits right behind the fuel filler or EV plug door. And the corners of the scraper can also be used as a tire tread depth gauge. It fits every Skoda model except the non-electric version of the CityGo. Automakers believe that plug-in hybrids are the perfect bridge from internal combustion engines to battery electrics. Consumers can experience a pure electric driving experience, but still have the long distance driving range they're used to, even in the winter. The only thing is, consumers don't seem to agree. Sales of plug-in hybrids are going nowhere. Get this, there are 27 plug-in models sold in the U.S. market, but only 110,000 of them were sold in the first 11 months of the year, and that was down nearly 30% from a year ago, according to data from Ward's Intelligence. And that means, from a business standpoint, that this segment is a disaster. All that new safety equipment in cars is really making an improvement in safety. General Motors studied the impact of safety technology with the Transportation Research Institute at the University of Michigan. They compared vehicles with this technology to the same kind of models without it, and the results are extremely encouraging. Cars with automatic emergency braking had 46% fewer rear-end accidents. Rear park assist, which warns you when you're about to back into something, cut those accidents by 38%. Vehicles equipped with IntelliBeam, which automatically dims the high beams, cut accidents by 35%, and lane departure warning cut them by 20%. Traffic fatalities in the U.S. have been falling for three years, and as more vehicles get this technology, we should see a noticeable reduction in car accidents. That's it for today. Thanks for watching, and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.